Today we will learn and reflect on the writings of St. Basil the Great, one of the Cappadocian Church Fathers, on the topic of envy. St. Basil teaches us, envy is the form of hatred that is the hardest to tame. St. Basil illustrates his teaching on envy with many stories of Jesus and the patriarchs from the Bible. At the end of our talk, we will discuss the sources we use for this video and my blogs that cover the topic. Please, we welcome interesting questions in the comments. Let us learn and reflect together. St. Basil the Great was a 4th century bishop of Caesarea, Cappadocia, and what is now Turkey. St. Basil, along with his brother, St. Gregory of Nyssa, and his friend, St. Gregory of Nazianzus were together known as the Cappadocian Church Fathers and were leading theologians in the early church. What is envy? St. Basil teaches us that envy is distress caused by your neighbor's prosperity. The jealous person is never free from anguish and is never free from despair. Is your neighbor successful? Does he drive a nice car, live in a nice house, have an attractive wife and precious children? Is he happy? Is he healthy? Is he wealthy? All these things, St. Basil warns us, all these things feed the illness and increase the pain of the jealous person. Often, the person who envies buries his envy deep in his soul, not wanting to reveal it to others. And sometimes he's not willing to recognize it himself. He's embarrassed to reveal the envy, rotting his soul as rust destroys iron. He's embarrassed to admit to himself, I'm resentful and bitter. I'm depressed by the joy of my brother and that my brother's good fortune is my affliction. The cure he seeks for the misery of his envy is waiting for his neighbor to fall on hard times. St. Basil warns us the envious waits for his more fortunate neighbor to be deprived of his happiness so he can become an object of pity. He may even pretend to be his neighbor's friend when he falls on hard times, praising the heights from which he has fallen, weeping with him now that he is sad. His neighbor's riches he admires only after they are lost. His neighbor's health and vigor he praises and extols only after they are ravished by illness. He is an enemy of good things when they're present, but he's their friend when they are gone. St. Basil also teaches us, Envy is the form of hatred that is the hardest to tame. While acts of kindness may soothe those who might otherwise be our enemies, this same kindness shown to the envious and malicious person irritates him even more. The more the envious man is shown kindness, the more indignant and displeased and disgusted he becomes. And we have some examples of envy in the Holy Scriptures. St. Basil recalls the same example from Scripture as St. Cyprian, with a differing emphasis for some examples. The fallen angel, Lucifer, was angry with God because of God's generosity towards humanity. And he showed his vengeance against humanity since he could not take vengeance against God. St. Basil credits envy for the original sin, which is the rebellion of Lucifer from God and the disobedience of Adam. Just as freedom from envy belongs to God, who is good, so envy belongs to the devil. St. Basil also teaches us, by acting in the same way with envy, Cain showed that he was the first disciple of the devil, learning from him both envy and murder. God saw the good in Abel's heart, and Abel's offering was accepted by God, while Cain's offering was rejected. When Cain saw the honor bestowed on Abel by God, he showed his vengeance against Abel, since he, like Lucifer, could not take vengeance against God. The King Saul in the Old Testament was only too happy to allow the lowly shepherd boy, a David, armed with only a slingshot, to face the mighty Goliath in battle. Saul had David try on a heavy suit of armor, but the armor was too bulky for the young David. But David had faith, for God had given David the courage to face down lions with his slingshot while guarding his herds alone at night. But after David quickly downed and killed the giant Goliath, and after David was made a general, and the crowd celebrated Saul who killed his thousands, and David who killed his ten thousands of the enemy, Saul's jealousy grew and grew. David was able to soothe the insanity of King Saul with his lyre, but Saul in his anger threw his javelin to kill David. 
Once, when King Saul was pursuing David and his band relentlessly, he camped in a system of caves where David was hiding. David cut a swath of cloth from Saul's clothes, later showing it to Saul in the light of day, reminding him that Saul's life was in his hands. Even this kindness shown in his forbearing would not extinguish Saul's anger towards David. And the backstory to this incident was that although David was promised the kingship of Israel, he would not murder Saul to take it from his hands. And like St. Cyprian, the highest example of envy to St. Basil is shown by the madness of the Jews who crucified the Savior. St. Basil asks, why did they envy Christ? They envied Christ because of his miracles. What were these miraculous works? The salvation of the needy. The hungry were fed, and Christ who gave them life was resented. Demons were expelled, and Christ who commanded them to depart was plotted against. Lepers were cleansed, and the lame walked, and the deaf heard, and the blind saw. And Christ who worked these miracles was put to flight. And finally, when they handed over to death the Christ who granted them life, scourging the liberator of mankind, condemning the judge of the world. Envy is so evil, it led to all of this. Now I admit, when I first read the passages linking the shouts of the crowd on the eve of Passover regarding our Christ, crucify him, crucify him, shouting to Pilate that he should rather release Barabbas, the robber, than Christ, when he told the crowd that this Jesus was innocent, that he had done nothing wrong, and although this was doubtless an evil act, I never thought of the crowd being driven by envy. But then, why did the crowd who cried Hosanna when Jesus entered Jerusalem but a few days before, why did the same crowd enthusiastically cry out, Crucify him, crucify him? Doubtless they were not the exact same crowd, but we should trust the church fathers on these matters. They were much closer to these times than we modern readers are. They understand the ancient mindset far better than us. If the crowds were not driven by envy, what other madness would have seized on the crowds for them to turn on Christ so quickly? Envy can cause madness. St. Basil teaches us that the envious are worse than wild beasts. Dogs become gentle when fed, and lions become tame when they are treated with kindness. But when treated kindly, jealous persons become all the more savage. And we see in history many examples of envy driving mass murderous mayhem. We have seen the persecution of the Jews in the Middle Ages, how the crowds massacred many Jews in their ghettos on the way to the Crusades, and we see how in recent years the Nazis murdered many of the European Jews in the Holocaust. The Nazis were envious of the Jews' success and their wealth and their intelligence and their influence in society. The Nazis blamed the Jewish conspiracies for Germany's defeat in World War I and all the sufferings of the Germans suffered in the Great Depression. And who can forget in the beginning of the Nazi rule, the Kristallnacht, the night of broken glass, where the Gestapo instigated the looting and burning of synagogues and Jewish cemeteries, hospitals, schools, and homes. And also who can forget in America the thousands of lynchings since the 1860s, and the terrorists who did this lynchings were definitely envious of the success of many of these blacks. And sometimes these lynchings were public events commemorated by gruesome postcards. How can we avoid envy? And as St. Basil teaches us, the key is reminding ourselves that no human circumstance is great or marvelous in itself. Not prosperity, not wealth, not health, not success, not renown which fades away. The rich man is not enviable for his riches, nor is the powerful for their dignity and celebrity, nor the vigorous man for his strength and health, nor the wise man for his intelligence and eloquence. Why should we envy those who have these advantages? These advantages can make man either blessed or cursed, depending on their heart that only God can see. St. Basil reminds us, these are all instruments of virtue when used in the right way. But none of these advantages guarantee our happiness. Whoever uses these advantages in the wrong way is pitiable, like the man who cuts himself with a sword meant for defense against his enemies. But whoever uses their advantages, like their wealth, their success, their position in life, in service of good and the light, according to right reason, he is then a trustworthy steward of the gifts he received from God. The virtuous do not hoard their wealth and good fortune solely for their own personal enjoyment. The virtuous deserve their rightly given praise and affection 
for their love for their brothers and their generous character. What is St. Basil's closing advice to us? And he teaches us, when you elevate your mind and fix your attention on what is truly good and praiseworthy, you will be far beyond thinking that any corruptible and earthly good is a source of happiness or enviable. When you acquire this habit of mind, you will not be obsessed with worldly goods as if they had great eternal value, and you will find it impossible to feel envy for your neighbor. And St. Basil warns us, if you seek only personal glory, if you seek to outshine your neighbor, if you cannot bear to be in second place, you need to change the direction of your life as if you are redirecting the course of a stream, and you need to redirect your ambition to the acquisition of virtue. Free yourself entirely from the desire to get rich in any way that you can. You need to free yourself from the desire to be known for your worldly accomplishments, for these are not entirely in your power. And St. Basil continues, Instead, be righteous and self-controlled and prudent and courageous and patient in your sufferings for the sake of piety. In this way you will save yourself. Virtue cannot be present in the soul unless the soul is purified of all the passions, especially envy. And salvation is freedom from envy. And now to talk about the sources we used for this video. The essay on envy we discussed is included in this collection of the works of St. Basil the Great on Christian doctrine and practice, which were called moral homilies in prior centuries. The translation is very good. It is very readable but it doesn't include the Greek as some books in this popular patristic series does. The introduction has many pages detailing the history of the many compilations and translations of his works, but it never says how many unique manuscripts exist, but we must presume there are multiple manuscripts, since the works of the Cappadocian Fathers have been treasured since antiquity. The YouTube description links to the video script in our blog, Please support our channel by sharing this video with your friends and by clicking the like and subscribe button and by clicking on the Amazon links to purchase any of the books we discussed and please consider becoming a patron of our channel. And please click on the links for interesting videos on other topics that will broaden your knowledge and improve your soul. Thank you.